वेलकम टू इनफाइव मिनट्स लेट अस नाउ लुक एट मोर डेवलप्ड आईएसबी सिस्टम इंडिपेंडेंट साइड बैंड सिस्टम इन विच वी हैव फ्यू एक्स्ट्रा ब्लॉक्स दिस विल बी अ वेरी मच क्लोज टू द प्रैक्टिकल आईएसबी ट्रांसमीटर विच विच वी कैन हैव इन एनी एप्लीकेशन दैट यूजेस आईएसबी ट्रांसमिशन सो द कंसेप्ट दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड रिमेन्स द सेम Uh, we are going to take two modulating signals uh, generate double sideband suppressed carriers first keep uh, upper sideband of the first signal and lower sideband of the second signal add both the sidebands together using a linear adder and that will give you two sidebands but uh, both will be carrying the different uh, information and in this whole process we use the same carrier signal so let us go through this detailed block diagram of a uh, practical ISB system you can see uh, we have uh, two modulating signals coming from channel A and channel B so we have channel A amplifier and channel B amplifier which will simply amplify the incoming signals you can see the bandwidth of the amplifiers are mentioned to be 4 kilohertz in both the cases this simply means that the input signals which are given to the amplifiers have the bandwidths of 4 kilohertz now in such a case we are assuming that the information signals that we have are nothing but the human speech signals because we know that the frequency of the human voice is from uh, 300 hertz to 3.3 kilohertz so uh, to make sure that all the frequencies are amplified without any attenuation we choose the amplifiers with bandwidths up to 4 kilohertz at least the output of both the amplifiers which are the amplified versions of the modulating signals are given to the balance modulators we have uh, balance modulator 1 and balance modulator 2 to which i'll be giving a common carrier signal so you can see uh, the carrier signal which is generated by rf carrier crystal oscillator is given to both the balance modulators crystal oscillator is used to generate a very stable carrier frequency and in this case i'm using the frequency of uh, 100 kilohertz which is very small for any isb practical application uh, but you will understand uh, why this small frequency uh, for the carrier signal is used initially in fact we have come across a similar design approach previously also we are generating the modulated signal at low carrier frequency first so that the design of uh, the generating circuits and the design of the filters most importantly will be simplified will be easy because it's it's easier to design the filters at low frequencies than at high frequencies because at high frequencies we run into the problems uh, generated by the parasitic capacitors and hence uh, we are first taking a carrier frequency which is of low value you can see uh, it is given to the balance modulators uh, along with the information signals so output of the first balance modulator will be nothing but double sideband suppressed carrier so will be the output of the second balance modulator uh, but please remember that uh, the information carried will be different in both the cases the first uh, signal is uh, carrying the information of channel a and the second dsbsc signal is carrying the information of channel b after that we have usb filter and lsb filter <clears throat> you can see output of the usb filter will be upper side band and the frequency range of the upper side band as we had written earlier will be from fc to fc plus fm1 so you can now see that uh, in this case fc is 100 kilohertz and fc plus fm1 fm1 will be nothing but 4 kilohertz the bandwidth uh, that we are keeping of the modulating signal so it becomes 100 plus 4 which is 104 kilohertz so that's my upper sideband coming from the first channel the second channel uh, we are using lsb filter so output will only be lower sideband and lower sideband frequency range if you remember was from fc minus fm2 up to fc uh, in this case again fm2 will be 4 kilohertz fc is 100 so 100 minus 4 will give you 96 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz so you can see there is no overlapping in the frequency spectrum of the two signals when we add them using a linear adder i will get a final signal which will contain both the sidebands uh, and the range of this output of the adder will be from fc minus fm2 to fc which is 
kilohertz to 100 kilohertz and uh, on the upper sideband side it will be from 100 kilohertz to 104 kilohertz so that's the total range of the output so the entire signal will be now spread across 96 to 104 kilohertz of frequency band I repeat out of which uh, the lower sideband uh, represents my signal coming from channel B and the upper sideband represents signal coming from channel A. This much uh, system we had discussed uh, earlier also.